welcome back to Rugged Mountain Homestead. My name is Sarah and I'm in the kitchen today in a big way. And so I'm really glad you've joined me. Um, I have a lot of things going on and so I figured that I would go ahead and turn the camera on and we could share a real kitchen day. What I am doing today is that I have three pasta dishes that are going to be going into the freezer. Um, and I also have breakfast muffins that I'm going to be doing and doing some extra batches and freezing so that we can have them ahead of time. The weather has really started to break. Dean and I have been outside working on garden beds um, and different things outside, but we're supposed to be getting a storm soon. And I will not complain out in this area about getting rain. So I just decided to go ahead and get some things done in the kitchen today. Now first you might notice that my workspace is different and Dean has finished my kitchen island. Um, the butcher block has been oiled and conditioned and it's just absolutely beautiful. Even though you can't see it right now, I have a few pictures that'll be at the end of this video so that you can kind of see a little bit of the process and more detail of what it looks on the front and the sides. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be making banana nut muffins and I'm going to make some pumpkin muffins. I haven't decided if I'm going to add blueberry muffins to that list or not, but I'm at least going to have uh, two batches going. And I'm going to also just make the dry mix at the same time for future use. Um, it'll just be easy. This is the best way to do it sometimes. I already have everything out. All right, I am using a recipe for this muffin mix from my Better Homes and Gardens cookbook from 1990. Um, it is really great, and so I've just used it. I do stick to a recipe a lot better when I'm baking than when I'm just doing regular cooking. So the easiest thing for me to do is to try and stay organized on days like this. When I have several meals going, when I have a couple breakfasts, things going and then I have to get on a dessert for dinner tonight too. Um, so I just try to pull everything out that I'm going to need prior to getting started. And that includes any type of utensils like a funnel or anything like that. So saying all that, let's get started. Okay, first I'm gonna do the banana nut muffins and the dry mix at the same time. And first it calls for one and three quarter cups all-purpose flour. So now that I have the one and three quarter cups of flour added to my mixing bowl, I'm just going to do the same thing each step along the way, but I'm going to add it to my jar instead. When I'm done with the flour, I just set it aside so that I know I'm finished with it and when I get to the end of the recipe, I can just wipe everything down, put it away at one time or start over again. And now we have one third cup of sugar. Two teaspoons of baking powder, but since we live at high altitude, I have to reduce it to one and a half for us. egg. 
three quarters cup of milk. Now it says a quarter cup of cooking oil. I don't like to use cooking oil in my muffins. So I'm just using a quarter cup of butter, whole butter. And since I'm doing banana nut muffins, I'm going to put in half a cup of chopped walnuts and three sliced bananas. And I get my bananas so they're kind of freckled. Um, you usually can get them a little bit uh, cheaper at stores when they get to be about that ripe. Um, I usually make banana bread, th um, throw it in the freezer. I have also just mashed it and thrown that in a baggie in the freezer so that if I want to use it for something in a future date, I have just the mashed banana. Now today is a very real day for me in the kitchen. Um, I have things that are going to be washed up here soon. My sink has a big pot in it, um, but that's okay. When I get these muffins in the oven, that is when I take the time to wash up as I go. I try to keep everything in a rhythm and a lot of times before I start a day like this. I just don't um, do it willy-nilly. I usually have um, my planner where I know that I'm gonna mark off some time to spend in the kitchen, not rushed, usually when Dean's outside, and I make myself some notes just of what I'm doing so that I can kind of get it into a rhythm, get things prepped, and pulled out and it makes things a lot more enjoyable. And I have been doing all this in real time. If I have prepped anything ahead of time, we'll talk about it in a minute. This is now ready for the mixer. While that is mixing in the stand mixer, I knew that I was going to need a grease muffin pan. So what I did is I just took out a little bit of coconut oil and put it in each of these six muffin cups. I like to use the jumbo size so that you really have a nice size muffin um, that comes out. And Dean seems to enjoy those a lot better anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that all nice and greased up while I'm waiting for that to mix. This is just another thing you can prep ahead of time before you get started. Okay, now that I have my pan all greased up with the coconut oil, if I have a little bit here and there, it doesn't bother me because it's going to melt. It's gonna melt into the muffins and you can't taste the coconut in coconut oil. And um, it doesn't give off like a, an oily feeling or residue or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get the mixture into the muffin cups. Right as I was pulling everything out to start the recipe, I went ahead and preheated the oven at that time so that when I am finished, it can just immediately go into the oven. These smell so good. So before we get going at warp speed, I like to get a few of these things done. And I know there's a lot of people that make it look so super easy. Um, and for, you know, a lot of people just have a natural talent, I guess. But to me, I have to have things written down. I have to kind of get into a rhythm. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna take a small ladle and I'm gonna scoop it into each of the muffin tins. The 
It's made a nice batter. Sometimes I have to add a little more liquid to it um, at high altitude. They said when I first moved here and I visited the extension office to get my pressure canner checked out, not to be afraid of adding more liquid up here. So that's really true. And I'm not anymore. Um, but this batter, this is the first one I've done where I really haven't had to. You start paying close attention when you learn to cook at a different, or bake at a different altitude. My first two batches of cookies, I wanted to cry because I like to bake, I like to have things on hand, and they just came out so awful. And that is like something so simple. And I thought, oh boy, I'm gonna have problems. But like anything else, you do it a couple times and you're good after that. All right. Now these are going to go in the oven. 300, oh goodness. See what I mean? This is 400 and I preheated to 375. So it'll take just, I will, in the meantime, I will go ahead and get this muffin mix put away. I'll just set it over here for now because I'm going to just put a little note card on it that it is muffin mix and that I just have to add the wet ingredients, which would be the egg, milk, and butter, and then any type of fruit that I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna be doing, it's an Italian day. I'm gonna be doing manicotti, beefaroni, and lasagna. Um, I had planned to do stuffed shells, but they were, even though I bought jumbo shells, they were kind of tiny, kind of small. You can't stuff them, so. Anyway, three Italian dinners going here. So I like to, again, before I start the whole shebang, to be as prepared as I can so that I can just get rolling. And so with the manicotti, I went ahead and took it out of the box. I put it in here in the aluminum pan so that I can just be ready, have it out, and um, won't have to think about it too much. Then I took out how much macaroni that I'm gonna need to make the beefaroni. I just go ahead and put it in its pan. And then the lasagna pan, I am using those oven ready noodles. Um, so I just have that laying in here right now. That'll be the, that'll be the easiest. And I just have them setting over here until it's time to go. Now, for what I did ahead of time, the only thing that I did ahead of time before I turned on the camera was yesterday I browned up probably eight pounds of ground beef. No big deal to that. And then before I turned on the camera, I chopped up 10 cloves of garlic. I chopped up a really large onion. I sauteed it. And then I now have my sauce going. Um, my sauce is super simple because I'm gonna be using it in multiple dishes. It was just that sauteed garlic and onion. And then I used, I think it was like seven cans of crushed tomatoes and five cans of diced tomatoes. And then I just seasoned it to taste. I know that I used garlic powder and oregano, parsley, pepper, and a tiny bit of red pepper. So I have that going in my big stock pot over here. Let's take a look. Then in the red Dutch oven right here, I have about a pound and a half of hot Italian sausage that was made at our local butcher shop. And I have it browned up. I'm gonna be using it 
um, to stuff in the manicotti. So the oven light has gone off, indicating that we are to temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and put the muffins in. Uh, those should go in here 20 minutes. Okay, I've gone ahead and set my timer and I will get this mess cleaned up. Okay, friends, so that was the 20 minute mark and I got the dishes picked up and these actually turned out really, really beautiful. Um, they smell fantastic. And I just wanted to see if they would go ahead and come out even though they're not cooled because I wanna go ahead and make my second round of muffins um, and would like to have the pan. So we are going to be on to round two, which I've decided is gonna be blueberry muffins for Dean. Okay, and once these muffins are completely cool, then I will put each muffin in a sandwich baggie and then I will put all six muffins into a gallon freezer bag, label them, throw them in the freezer. Um, I currently have a banana bread that I pre-sliced and had been thrown, thrown in the freezer a couple weeks ago. And I'm eating on that. Okay, now I leave the blueberries in the freezer until exactly when I need them to make these muffins. But I bought the five pound box from Azure of frozen blueberries. And then I break it down and put two cups into a sandwich bag. And then I mark the freezer bag blueberries two cups per package um, since this recipe only calls for one cup i'm just going to eyeball half of this bag into the mix and then i'll throw them back in the freezer i also like to try and get a good kitchen day um, when i know that i have the azure order being picked up soon and the azure order will be arriving in three days. So I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room in my freezer, um, in the cupboard, because I got 11 cases this time. But we'll talk about that more on the Azure haul. Okay, now at this point, I could actually make another dry muffin mix if I chose to. I'm just not going to um, today because I have a banana bread in the freezer I'm going to have banana nut muffins in the freezer and I'm making blueberry muffins. So I'll just hold off on that for just a little bit. But um, for those of you that buy the prepackaged Martha White um, Betty Crocker muffin mixes, this really is a good alternative if you could just, you know, spend a little time making a couple of them ahead of time. You don't even have to put it in a mason jar. You can put it in you know, a bag, a freezer bag or something like that, just as long as it's sealed. So it's one and three quarters all purpose flour. Oops. And I do use the unbleached. Unbleached is just that where it hasn't been as processed, it hasn't been bleached, things haven't been pulled out of um, the flour and then added back in. basically a cooking fat and you could use coconut oil if you didn't want to use um, vegetable oil canola oil you could use olive oil um, I'm using butter real butter and then I'm gonna put in a cup of blueberries like I said I'm just gonna eyeball it I'm just gonna squeeze the bag in half and then throw this back in the big bag in the freezer. Now, off to the mixing stand with these. And while this is mixing, everything else is still on the stove. 
I will just clean up this area completely. Here's our blueberry mixture. really good. But since we weren't able to get blueberries this go round, they were out of stock with Azure. I went ahead and I have 20 pounds of apples coming. So I will have plenty to work with. Dean likes apples. Blueberries are his favorite, but he does like apples, and so I'll have plenty to make for him. Right. Just the same thing, just gonna dip these into the pan. Now, these are a little bit thicker. I'm just going to throw in some milk here. And I don't think I need to put it back on the stand mixer. I'll just go ahead and mix it by hand a little bit. Well, I was getting ready to say, I don't usually measure that out too much when I have to add additional liquid. I just have gotten so used to, you know, just pouring a little bit in at a time and being able to see it. Not like I just did. You know, it'd be just as easy to edit those parts out but I think it's important to know that nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes in the kitchen or little mishaps like that. Um, actually looks like it's gonna work out just fine, but we can always correct them. You know, just don't be afraid. All right, these are ready for the oven, 20 minutes. Okay, timer is set. So, I marked that off my list. And so, the kitchen's still rolling relatively easily. Um, things are picked up, except what's in the sink from those blueberry muffins. I'm holding the Italian sausage in this Dutch oven that I cooked it in until I'm ready to use it. Let's check on the sauce. nice and now ready to roll onto the dinners now with the dinners what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the manicotti the elbows and I'm just going to um, cook them halfway so once the water comes to boiling instead of putting them in there for six minutes I'm just going to do it for three now on a day like today, you might be wondering, okay, you're in the kitchen for a while. Um, what are you gonna do for dinner? Aren't you gonna be sick of being in the kitchen by this point? You know, I'm not gonna wanna start another meal completely different, no. So what most likely will happen is that whatever sauce is left in that pot after putting in these three pans will be dinner tonight. I will throw in some spaghetti and that's what we'll have spaghetti it's not going to make any of us either of us sick of any you know things because these are going in the freezer and um you know so it's not like we're going to be eating italian for the next four nights in a row and italian's really easy to do um like this because it's just basically variations of pasta, meat, and cheese. So it helps to be able to lay them out. 
So while the sauce is simmering, waiting for the water to come to boil, let's go ahead and make our filling for the lasagna and the manicotti. Okay, so to make the filling for the manicotti, I am going to use shredded mozzarella, two 15 ounce containers of ricotta cheese, and a cup of Parmesan cheese. I have some garlic, parsley, I'm going to put in a little bit of onion salt just to season it, and two eggs. It looks like our water has come to a boil, so I'm going to go ahead and place the manicotti shells in there. I'm going to start by putting in my ricotta cheese. Now I'm going to put in the cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay, so we have our ricotta and our Parmesan in. I'm just going to... This is where I'm different from baking. I'm just going to put in a little bit of onion salt. A little bit of parsley. Probably like a teaspoon. and some garlic. I'll probably do like two teaspoons for that. All right. I'm going to put in my two eggs. And now some of the mozzarella cheese. I'm going to start off by just putting half in here. I have four cups. Um, yeah. Maybe three quarters of it. And then the hot Italian sausage. Of course, it has cooled off by now. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take this over to the stand mixer. Okay, now it's just like a rhythm, a groove that you get into. So the muffins, I checked them, they were ready to come out. Manicotti was ready to be drained. I have the water heating back up so that I can um, put the elbow macaroni in. So before I get into all the mess of stuffing the manicotti, I'm going to go ahead and put the banana nut muffins into their bags. Um, and then I will have more room to take out the blueberry muffins and let them cool. So it just is kind of, um, working in tandem. Okay, so these are banana nut muffins. Go ahead and label my big bag. And then I'm just gonna take one of these Flex Seal sandwich bags. I love these. Um, because they can, they're not just so stiff, they can they have a little bit of give. So I'm just gonna take one, wrap it up just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just like fold it over, kind of get it tight around it, just to get out as much air as possible. I know they're gonna be in another freezer bag, but I just like to do it. Just the, I don't want the idea of any air getting in and causing any type of freezer burn. I know it won't. It's just a good habit to get into. Nice 
nothing artificial, no added flavorings, colorings, any of that kind of stuff. The blueberry muffins are really purple and they don't look like the ones that come out of the bag, the pre-mades, but that's okay because I know they are good stuff. And now these will be ready for the deep freeze. And now you have convenience food on the go, nice size muffins, didn't cost me six, seven dollars for six of them or more. And yeah, it took a little bit of time, but these were quick and easy. Go ahead and take the blueberry muffins out. Let me show you what this looks like. Like I said, it doesn't look like the pre-package in a store and they are really purple. Um, they smell great though. And Dean's going to love them. And that's really all that matters. It's good for him. He's going to like it and It's gonna have an easy on the go. It doesn't even just have to be for breakfast. If you needed a quick snack, um, you know, you have errands and just anything that keeps us in the car going somewhere. Um, little kids pack them in lunch boxes. They're already bagged up for you. You're making your own convenience foods at a fraction of the cost because everything minus the blueberries people have on hand you know flour sugar milk eggs baking powder and that's why i try to keep some sort of frozen fruit on hand um, whatever frozen fruit you like can also do it with fresh fruit and just throw it in. Okay, so now that the banana nut muffins are taken care of and I've made the filling, the water for the oven macaroni has come to a boil. Turn it back and now I'll just add the macaroni. I had it put in the pan earlier. to go ahead and stuff our manicotti. It's been draining. So I'll use the pan I had earlier. I will get my ladle. And this is the pan that the manicotti um, was in before the shells were boiled. So I'm just gonna take a couple ladlefuls just to cover the bottom of the pan. All right, so the manicotti shells, I'm just gonna lay them right on top of that. Bottom um, that's a little warm, so I'll put a towel down. I'm just so protective of my new island my butcher block that dean made me so i know it could probably go on here but i'm just not going to risk it right now well that was almost a mess all right so i'm just going to take the manicotti 
and spoon some of that in there. And that spoon is too big. I'll use a knife to get it down in there. And I'm sure somebody has a better way. Um, Okay, so while I was in the middle of stuffing manicotti shells, my um, elbow macaroni is halfway there, and so I want to go ahead and take this out now. And just let those sit there while I finish doing the manicotti. Now, I have I'm sure there's an easier way of doing it, but I find that just getting some on the knife and putting it down all the way to the center works fine. Um, it's going to be a little messy. But you know, I also I haven't made manicotti in a while. Um, but I remember, unless, I don't know, unless I'm really, really wrong, that manicotti shells, I thought, seemed to be bigger than these. And they didn't, this wasn't like a particular size. Um, it's just like I bought some jumbo shells that I was gonna use to stuff as well. And I pulled them out and they were not jumbo at all. Um, I guess I would consider them not the small ones like you would put in mac and cheese, but they weren't stuffing shells. I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. I split the side on this one by accident a little bit. So it's being a little easier. But it's also nice not to have the pasta cooked all the way, just halfway. It makes it much easier to handle when you're trying to stuff it. Plus, you're not gonna want it, you know, fully cooked because when you put it in the oven, you don't want it to get mushy. Okay, I have all my manicotti noodles stuffed now. Uh, right there and I'm going to go back over to the stove and pour some more sauce on them. I like it completely covered. I'm going to get my pot holders because I want to support the bottom. Okay. I still have about half a bowl of the cheese mixture. I'm just gonna take the rest of the shredded mozzarella cheese and spread it over the top. All right. That's it. That is manicotti. And our elbow macaroni's been draining, so that's gonna be super simple. I will now take out my heavy duty foil. You definitely want heavy duty foil for this. I'm just gonna lay this foil on here. And then it came with these like lids look like this but I went ahead I'm going to use it and I put what's on here in in the pan manicotti and to bake it at 375 for 50 to 60 minutes thawed and for frozen I would stick it in there probably for two hours if me now this will probably be dinner not probably it will be dinner and lunch for Dean and I because there will be leftovers. Um, this would have fed 
my family of four, I just would have had to add a salad to it. Okay, manicotti is finished. I'm gonna set it over to the side with the muffins so that they can go to the deep freeze. I wanna be careful picking this up though. Like I said, beefaroni, super simple. Some sauce in the pan. I did add some ground beef that I had previously uh, browned up. I added three pounds of ground beef to the tomato sauce. And the elbow macaroni. Move it around there. Put some more sauce on that. Okay, now the elbow macaroni is completely covered in sauce. And be careful once it's full, the pan is full, to support the bottom. You do not want to waste all your hard work and your food in the floor. So now I'm just going to add some shredded mozzarella cheese and Parmesan cheese to the top. Okay, I'm going to put the Parmesan on first. I don't care about the clumps because um, it's going to melt down when it's in the oven. And then just take some mozzarella cheese and throw it on the top. This will be dinner and probably two lunches for Dean and myself. Again, this would have fed my family of four, um, you know, with a side. And my kids, they were very healthy eaters. Okay. I'm going to need to pull out new oil. Again, I'm using heavy duty foil. This one did not come with a lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double wrap it in foil. I'll use up every bit. This sounds vicious out there. Dean is on the porch with them. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my Sharpie, beefaroni. All right, there's another one, beefaroni. And our last one is going to be the lasagna. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the sausage into my meat sauce. So there'll be ground beef and um, Italian sausage. Now for our lasagna. I was always leery of the uncooked oven-ready lasagna noodles. I thought there is no way that they can get cooked and not be crunchy or like just too al dente. So I tried it one time. I thought, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try this and see. And it really does come out nice. So for things like this, I'm using them. Super, like it's just another step that's saved. Spread some of my meat sauce over here. Some 
Parmesan. Um, I don't need the knife anymore. And I'm just gonna plop some of this filling that we made just a little bit ago. I thought I would have to make more, but I think I'm gonna get away with just having made one bowl. One more. And you can't really spread this super well. I just try a little bit. Just kind of mix it in a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect and it doesn't need to be. And since I'm gonna be using the rest of that in the lasagna, I don't care if I get sauce on this spoon. All right, and we have some of this mozzarella left. Put that in there. Of our noodles, since I've made some space over here now, just put a little bit more mozzarella in there. I'm not real great, great at breaking those, but it works. More sauce. And I'm gonna have plenty of sauce for dinner tonight as well. So here in just a minute, I will put some elbow macaroni on. Not much, probably just a cup, because we have about a cup left from doing the beefaroni. And I will just make like a baked dish tonight. And then these are all going in the freezer, so it's not like, oh gosh, now we have a ton of pasta to eat. Um, I mean, we like pasta, but I wouldn't want to do this for every night. So we'll go in the freezer and in the meantime, you know, I have other things. Those nights that I don't need to be outside working, I'm just doing stuff in the house, I can make dinner. It's not a big deal. Not every night is going to be a freezer night. These are for the occasions when um, you need a meal, you're going to know you're going to be exhausted. You know you're not going to feel like cooking. Or, you know, there could be a situation too that, you know, you find out that someone has had a death in the family or a birth in the family or something like that. And all you have to do is go to your freezer, pull out a meal. It's already labeled and everything and just, that's a blessing to someone else. And this looks like it's gonna be our last layer. And this will take up the rest of our ricotta mixture. So that worked out perfectly. So now all I have to do is put the noodles on the elbow macaroni, and throw a cobbler in the oven, and we're going to dinner. And I think we're going to need pot holders because it's still, it's still warm. And now you don't have to be like, oh my gosh, I've been in the kitchen and I've done these freezer meals and ugh, now I've got to cook dinner. You just incorporate it into what you're doing. I'll do that last. 
I would want, I would not want to start over from scratch to make a completely different dinner. Um, I didn't put anything in the crock pot or anything like that because I knew on these cooking days like this that I just make sure that I have some set aside, you know, that there's enough sauce in there so that, you know, tonight we will have pasta. And the next time we feel like pasta and here we have it. Spread this a little bit. Parmesan cheese. Rest of this mozzarella cheese. And the kitchen's not a major mess. Um, so that's good. I'm gonna put a little bit more of a macaroni on and put these few things away, put the muffins away, and I just have, look, I just have these right here to do. So it's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna cover this one as well. This is a pretty heavy duty um, pan. That's why I chose it for lasagna, but it did not have a lid. I will just double wrap it with heavy duty aluminum foil. Okay, well that'll wrap it up for today. We've gotten a lot done. We have a big pan of manicotti, a big pan of lasagna, a big pan of beef, uh, beefaroni, and two batches of banana nut muffins, oh, a batch of banana nut muffins and a batch of blueberry muffins. So I did get a late start today. I didn't um, start this until after lunch, about one o'clock. I'm always gonna be transparent with you guys. Um, looking at my clock now, it, it, my phone, it's 5.13. So I was in the kitchen for four hours. Um, that's really not bad because we have three big dinners. Tonight's dinner, which is four, and two batches of breakfast. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the extra for dinner tonight. I'm going to throw a cobbler in the oven for dessert and put those in the deep freeze for another day. So you might spend four hours in the kitchen today, but it's going to save you hours in the kitchen in the future. So thanks for joining me in the kitchen up on Rugged Mountain Homestead today. I hope that you'll give this a try and let me know how it goes. So I'll catch you on the next one. Um, our Azure Hall is coming up this week. And until then, take care.